What's going on kids at home? I decided this week it might be a lot of fun to talk about something that people have been asking me about from the beginning, which is the crazy costumes I wear during the show. So let's take a tour, shall we, through the wardrobe of Jared Kleinman. This beauty is my first look. Here we've got this t-shirt that says 1993, which I guess if Jared was born in 1993, how old would that make him? That would make him uh, 24 these days, so he's not born in 1993, but he wears this 1993 shirt, which is available from a company called Beyond Modern Los Angeles, whatever the heck that is. Maybe they were founded in 1993, maybe that's the idea. And then I wear a Top Man purple shirt, which here's a detail of the pattern. It's like this cool prehistoric sort of beach tiki thing that gets reiterated. Top Man, baby. Jared's mom is spending hella money on his clothes. And then here we've got some shorts that I wear. They're like really just cutoffs, but they're like kind of fancy. They're by this company called Brooklyn Calling, which is totally faded. But you can see this is what I wear as my first look. Ba -da -ba -ba. Now, certain looks get recycled. So what I'm wearing here is the top half of my second look, which I change into after waving through a window. So it's this Zelda t-shirt, which you can see here. This is available at Urban Outfitters. And then I wear this weird sort of hoodie with this gray-blue thing going on. Pretty sure that's H&M, right? Mm, yeah, pretty sure it's H&M. This is from H&M. I wear it with the aforementioned Brooklyn Calling cut-off shorts. That right there, what we call look numero dos. Bad news, look number three is not up here in the dressing room at this point in the show, but it is a blue Johnny Pops shirt, which is a friend of the family, if you will, available at johnnypops.com if you want to buy those shirts. It's a robin's egg blue Johnny Pops shirt, and then I wear this American Eagle shirt over it that actually is sort of oddly similar to the stuff that's on the purple shirt. It's like got palm trees and like sharks and beach balls and I think drugs too. I think there's drugs on this shirt. You can't really tell, so like, you know, dare, dare not to do drugs, take a bite out of crime, don't do drugs kids at home, but might be a shirt with drugs on it. Look number seven, no, one, two, three, look number four is the look that I come down for right after for forever. So here you can see it is this, uh, this stripey polo here, which is pretty sure that's the Gap, baby, from the Gap. It's a stripey polo. Here's a neat little detail. It has a snap sewn into it so that I don't uh, reveal too much cleavage in these scenes. So that's a little, all these shirts have been hemmed in terms of length and they've all had modifications like that made to them. So they look like really great. And I wear those with just regular jeans. I actually have a different pair of jeans for the first act and the second act. I don't think my first act jeans are here. No, they're downstairs somewhere. But jeans, that's also when I change from the first shoes, by the blue shoes which used to be mine, for the record, into these black shoes, which I wear for most of the show. The blue shoes were mine, and then they couldn't find shoes that were the same color for the actual show, for the production. So they bought me a new pair of shoes, and we traded the new shoes for the old shoes. Wow! In that look, I also wear this hoodie over the stripy polo. Unfortunately, we do not have the next look up here, which is the sincerely me look, but it's famously photographed in the New York Times and other places. I wear a gray uh, map of Westeros, you know, like Game of Thrones t-shirt, and then it is a, a, a gray and red checkered shirt, which actually appears in a later look as well. Here's the next look. This is for right after, if I could tell her. It's this Don't Stop Believing shirt, which I believe is also headline shirts, I believe is an Urban Outfitters brand. So you can see these pigs, they're very, very cool. And then over it I wear, again, Brooklyn Calling. This Brooklyn Calling shirt with this like cool crosshatch pattern and <gasps> Mike Feist. This was actually taken uh, in March of 2015 when we were doing the workshop. And here you can see before his hair got so long. You guys see Lestat? My beautiful, 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 beautiful boy. A plus loved that show.
I did actually, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, this is the look that I stormed down after if I could tell her in and ruin the day. The next two looks are unfortunately not up here either. Those looks are uh, what I wear in Disappear, which is a uh, brown shirt. I don't actually know where you get it, but it says Coffee is for Closers, which is a reference to the excellent David Mamet play and movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross, which if you have not seen or read, you should go see and read, unless you're not allowed to uh, read or see things with profanity in them, because there's a lot of cursing, because it's David Mamet. Um, and then over that, I reprise the uh, the red and gray Sincerely Me button-down. I'm sorry to give you all these right after Halloween, but maybe next year this will still be a popular look. Um, I keep the shoes, keep the pants, all stays the same. Then, the next scene. Unfortunately, I don't have the next scene costume in here either. That is the You Will Be Found costume. It is a uh, black, gray, and like dark burgundy uh, horizontal striped shirt. And then over that, I wear a, a black shirt, or gray shirt, with like little white flecks on it that almost look like feathers. They're like, they're basically like polka dots from a distance, but they're not quite polka dots, which I think is cool. All right, second act, here we go. There it is. Pokemon made me do it. Again, headline shirts. Pretty sure that is a, um, pretty sure that's an Armed Outfitters thing. If not, available at headlineshirts.net. And then I wear this, uh, pretty sure this is American Eagle. Can I get under there? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's American Eagle. But it's just sort of your regular plaid shirt. And then the next look that I wear is on me right now, because that's the point in the play where we're at. So this is um, the Zelda shirt, and it's the same top half from look number two, but then on the bottom, jeans, baby, jeans. After that, I change again. I'll show you when we get there. All right, so here's my next look. Um, this is my good for you look. It is a t-shirt with the Flash logo emblazoned on it, which is available at Old Navy. And I'm pretty sure this is also from Old Navy, though the tag is impossible to discern. So this is my good for you look, and then uh, after good for you, I put on the sweatshirt that I've had on four times previously in the show, and I wear that for the You Will Be Found reprise, which is my second to last costume. After this, I'll show you the last one. Very fancy, I change everything, head to toe, wowie zowie, because it's the end of the play, spoilers, whoa! Alright, so here it is, our final look of the show. Here we have this Sriracha shirt, available again at Urban Outfitters. This shirt is made by, uh, oh, who even knows, but it's got this sort of like, beautiful, like, sunset looking pattern on it. Very cool, very neat. I've got some khakis on. And I've switched to gray shoes. For those of you who've been watching, it was blue Adidas at the beginning, which switched to black Vans, which are now gray Vans for the final scene. And that, kids at home, is it. Jared Kleinman's wardrobe in its entirety. All right, kids at home. It's been a lot of fun. You know I love the vlog. I love seeing you. So remember, in the meanwhile, hashtag you will roll and be found. Good night and good luck. See you next week. Sincerely me.